Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, Daniel. So, I have a question for you. Has connecting with God become something that you tick off your to-do list? Now, I love to-do lists. Like, I love to-do lists. See, I write to-do lists. I have a... um, I have a to-do list book. Um, I also write to-do lists on sticky notes. I write to-do lists on my phone. I write to-do lists on scrap pieces of paper. Like, I love to know what tasks need to be completed, and I take great pleasure in ticking off things as being fulfilled, as being completed. Um, In fact, I have been known to write things on my to-do list that I've already completed just so I get the satisfaction of ticking it off. Um, I even write to-do lists for my family of jobs that need to be done around the house. But I was deeply convicted some time ago. However, when I was writing one of these lists and I found myself thinking about writing, have a quiet time with Jesus on my list. And by quiet time, I mean, you know, like a time set aside to pray and read the Bible and connect with God. I literally stopped, pen paused mid-air as I was confronted with that question. Has connecting with God become something that I tick off my to-do list? And that just didn't seem right. And it got me thinking, has, has reading the Bible and praying just become a task to be completed? What about, what about attending a worship service or a life group? Have they just become another scheduled activity in my diary? I mean, can you imagine if I'd written, hang out with Adam on my to-do list? Like, he would rightly um, feel offended by that. See, surely opportunities to connect with God should not be viewed as tasks to be completed, but as conduits to grow more intimate in my relationship with God. How about you? We read these words of Jesus in John chapter 15. Here he's recorded as saying, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit or every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Here we have this picture of God the Father as a gardener, a vine dresser, and it's the Father's work to take care of the vineyard. Jesus is pictured as the true vine, and the believers are depicted as the branches. And there's two types of branches that are described, fruitless ones and fruitful ones. And as long as the branch remains connected to the source of sustenance and life, it's able to bear fruit. And the Father removes the branches that don't bear fruit, and he prunes those that do so that they will be even more fruitful. Jesus is our source of sustenance and life. And it would be absurd for us to think that a grapevine would continue to grow and bear fruit after it's been severed from the vine. Yet how often do we find ourselves drifting away from our very source of life and meaning and purpose and then find ourselves feeling dry and brittle and wonder why? So repeatedly in this passage, we're told to remain. And the original Greek word there is meno. And it's a verb meaning to stay, to stay in a given place, state, relation, or expectancy. And meno can mean to abide, to continue to be, 
to dwell, to endure, to be present, to stand, to tarry, or to linger. If you notice that there's nothing in that word meno that suggests quick, quick, fleeting, rushed, sporadic, temporary, or seasonal. Instead, this word remain or meno seems to imply longevity, a deliberate choice, even a state of being. And when we read this passage, we see that this call to remain or abide is actually twofold. So firstly, there's the active voice where Jesus says to his believers, remain in me, abide in me, stay with me, keep close to me. He says, follow me, do what I say, obey my commands, search the scriptures and allow the spirit to transform you. And the fruit of this will be that we love one another, forgive one another, reach out to one another, minister to one another. But did you notice also there was a second part, the passive voice, where Jesus says, and let me remain in you. He says, if you remain in me and I remain in you. And this is something that we can't force or even initiate, but it's a promise that we can expect and trust God for. See, for those who've surrendered their lives to the reign and rule of Jesus, he promises to remain with us. Through the person of the Holy Spirit, we're actually grafted into this vine, connected to Jesus with access to everything that we need to live fully the life that we're intended to. And did you notice that we need both to be fruitful? He says, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. So the Bible gives us some insight of what a fruitful life will look like. In Isaiah 5, we read that the fruit of the vine that God is looking for is things like justice and righteousness. In Galatians 5, we read that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of which describe the character of Jesus. You see, the fruit that our lives produce is that we will become more like Jesus. Jesus' character is reproduced in us. And if we continue reading that second part of verse 5, Jesus goes on to say, If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. See, when our lives are intimately connected and joined to Jesus, our lives are fruitful. But when we're disconnected from our life source, Jesus says we can do nothing. Now, that doesn't mean that we're unable to function because we can do many things without a dependence on Jesus. We can raise a family without him. We can run a business without him. In fact, we can be very active even as Christians. We can fill our days with activity and busyness. But without dependence on Jesus, we'll not become like him will have achieved nothing in God's sight. Because we have been created to connect with, not cleave from Jesus. And to do this, we need both that dependence and we need discipline. Ray Stedman writes, we must learn early that there's no chance of being a Christ-like Christian unless we discipline our life, initiating habits of searching the scriptures, praying with others, loving each other, forgiving one another and worshiping together. There is no possibility of growth and bearing fruit without that. See, just like a branch, when it's detached from the vine, it withers from lack of nourishment. So when we don't remain connected to Jesus, we find that we have a lack of power, a lack of peace, a lack of purpose, and a lack of productivity. We lack power to accomplish all that God has determined for our lives. We lack the peace that comes from knowing that we're in the center of God's will. We find that we um, lack a purpose for our lives, feeling unfulfilled, and that we lack productivity. We might be working hard, but not producing much fruit. But on the contrary, when we remain connected to Jesus, nurturing that relationship, spending time listening to him, learning from him, serving him, 
we discover an unusual power to accomplish all the purposes that go beyond our natural ability. Verse 7 says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. There's this unusual power. We have a peace that passes understanding. We have a surety of purpose that goes beyond our occupation and speaks into the why of why we were created. And we find that our lives become productive and fruitful and that which points to Jesus and brings glory to him. Verse 8 says, This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Have you ever, um, I quite like gardening, but have you ever used a hose that has a kink in it? Like, the water pressure is not what it can be. It's so frustrating because, like, um, you're not getting the water pressure and it takes so long to accomplish anything because the water's just trickling out. And I wonder sometimes whether our, our conduit to our connection with God can sometimes become a bit kinked. You know, the connection is not quite what it should be and we find accomplishing anything unproductive and frustrating. And having a kinked hose is, well, it's problematic, isn't it, when, we, when it's a watering hose. But what if it was a life-giving oxygen hose? then it would be fatal. You see, Jesus implores us to remain connected in a life-giving, growing, fruitful relationship with him. So we've been created to connect with not cleave from Jesus. But it's the faithfulness, not form, that matters. It's faithfulness, not form, that matters. Because you know what? Seasons in life change. But our need to remain faithfully connected to Jesus doesn't. And we know this is important, but outworking that reality of this can fall short because, well, life happens, doesn't it? There's daily challenges, like there's appointments and there's deadlines and there's health issues. And there's also seasonal changes. And we all go through seasons in life, which brings with it its own unique challenges. So our time with God won't look the same in every season, but it should exist in every season. Because there's never a day when we don't need to breathe, and there's never a day when we don't need to hear from Jesus. So faithfulness, not form, produces fruit. See, when it comes to connecting with God through daily Bible reading, well, I guess I'm a little bit of a creature of habit. So for years, I would wake up, I would fling open the curtains, and then I'd get back in bed and prop myself up, and I would read the Bible. Yes, I am a morning person. But it turns out, when I got married, that my husband doesn't appreciate the sun streaming in our bedroom at the first start of every day. So I had to adjust how that looked. Then along came children. And they didn't seem to appreciate how important this time was for mummy. So I'd set my alarm for 6 a.m. And without fail, they would wake at 6.01. Or if I work at 5.30, so would they. It's like they had this inbuilt sensor that just seemed to activate as soon as I sat down with my Bible. So my routine had to change again. So how do we keep connecting through all these different changing seasons in life. Well, instead of listening to me, I've asked a few people in different seasons of life if they could maybe just share a couple of ideas about how they connect with God in the season of life they happen to be in. So to start with, I'm just going to ask Kellen and Kat if they would come and share first, and then I'll have a few others after that. So Kellen is in year 12, which, you know, there's demanding study load, and Kat is, um, she is studying and she's also working part-time. So, Kellen, you can come first to share with us about how you connect with God in this season of life. Hello, peeps. <laughs> um, so, I find that as a teenager, I like to spend time at youth and we just chill and vibe afterwards. We listen to worship music and we get all these nice tingly sensations in our heart and that's what makes us really connect with God at youth. Um, since I have a really bad habit of going on social media every single weekend, um, I tend to like watching Jesus memes. That helps me really connect with 
my other fellows who believe in the means of Jesus and how much praise and wonder that brings to me every morning. And some of the other best things to do for me is every single night I read the Bible and it just makes me feel so like peaceful and happy and it really makes me believe, oh wow, by reading this I have new ways of looking at life and I can apply that in my everyday school life, talking to my friends and helping them with whatever issues I have. Thank you, Kellen. You can if you want. And Kat. Um, I'd say the biggest way that I connect to God is probably through worship. It is very late at night when I just like to sit in my room and I put on worship music because everyone else is asleep so I could have time to myself. And I just listen and chat, pretty much just try and see what God wants to say to me or sometimes I don't hear anything, but I just still sit in his presence and I also love connecting through my life group and church. Thanks, Kat. Kat's someone who um, I've seen who's prioritised. You know, she's at church, she's at life group, she's at prayer meeting. If there's something going on, Kat will be there. It's like, you know, a source of family and life for her. Okay, I'd also like to invite Brendan and Catherine and Murray, if you could come up and share. So again, we've got people in different stages. Brendan works in a demanding job, which often has him away from his family and away from his routine, and he's got a little one. Catherine works full-time, and she is mother of six children, so she has a very full life. And Murray has been through all of these seasons and is now at a place of retirement um, with all the challenges um, of that season. So, Brendan, let's hear from you. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so I particularly... Uh, when was the blip? It was last year, wasn't it? Um, spent, uh, found myself on a mine site for most of the year and, and really um, discovered the benefit of audio books and the audio Bible, um, listening to things. I didn't have to have the printed word in front of me, but I could engage with um, the scriptures of God that way and hearing also audible commentaries, so people's thoughts, discussions around that. So I didn't need to have the physical printed word in front of me. I could listen through that um, and, and think critically and and dwell on that while I was walking to and from work each day. That was great. Um, and also find that uh, discussing my thoughts and experiences uh, with friends, um, particularly people that I trust, um, and value their input and thoughts, um, we can hash out my thoughts and experiences and their thoughts and experiences together. And sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't agree, um, and that's okay. I can, I can still... I definitely connect with God um, through engaging with others and, and hearing, um, yeah, technology in my ears as I, as I walk and, and travel. Yeah, it's great. Thanks. Thanks, Brendan. <laughs> Catherine. So when Claire came to me um, this week and asked if I would share about how I connect to God, I think my first response was, well, I don't do it very well. Um, and she, and she said, well, it's not about perfection, it's about purpose. Um, and so I, I began thinking, and, and so I, I said to God, I said, well, how do I connect to you? And I could almost see him rolling his eyes at me and going, like you are now. Um, and so I've realised that a lot of, well, probably all my connection is just during the day. I'll be doing something, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to God, I'll... Um, I ask him what's going on, what am I supposed to do, I'll ask for strength, I'll, um, I'll ask him that the words that come from my mouth may be um, the right words, um, sometimes I ask him to, to um, help me forgive someone, it might be to give me strength, um, as, yeah, I work full time but I, I'm blessed that I, I love what I do, I love that I, I'm a teacher and so through that as well, I, I need to connect to God and to, to ask him what I should be saying to those kids in my care. Um, and I, I'm very blessed that I, I work at Calvary so that we are free to be talking about God. Um, and so we start the day with staff devotions, um, which really helps me connect with God with my colleagues. Uh, during the day, we're talking to the kids. We're able to bring in God's word to every lesson. Um, which I just find amazing, but it's also made me question 
what I really do believe and also has made me um, run to God to ask for the right things to stay, to ask for his wisdom. Um, and look, sometimes my connecting to God will be me locking myself in the cupboard so that I can be away from everybody and sometimes just, um, just crying, sometimes yelling at God. And I think I've learned that that's okay, that we bring our anger, we bring our frustration to God. He doesn't want us to hold that back from him. Um, what he doesn't want is for us to be complaining and grumbling to him, but to, to be honest. Um, and I think the biggest thing for me is to, to be still um, and know that he is God and he is in control. Um, and I might not know the plan, but I know that plan is good for me um, and for my family, for my children. Um, yeah, so. Thank you. <laughs> and Murray. I get to represent the over 60s. Um, yeah, just having recently retired, it's given me some great times with the Lord. Um, I start my day, if I may say this, I start my day by saying, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you. And I don't say it in a religious, ritualistic way, it's from the heart. And I'm, I guess by saying that, I'm saying to the Lord, Lord, I'm open for business, your business, and I'm in. So that's how I start. But I'm the first person to confess that I don't always accomplish that. And so for me, having short uh, accounts with the Lord means a lot. Um, and for those who might not be sure about what that means, it just it simply represents this, that when I'm convicted of sin, I confess it, I take steps to repent, and I move on. And that keeps that channel with the Lord open for a start. In terms of uh, like a practical way that I connect with the Lord, like I said, having recently retired, I'm able to go for power walks and I love power walks. And you know, it was great for the first few weeks, but then I started to get a bit bored with it. And I noticed other people doing their power walks and they've got music playing. And I thought to myself, well, why can't I have music playing? So I found all these high tempo, high powered, Christian truth songs, I'd call them, and it is wonderful. Those Christian truth songs just give me a sense of God's love, his grace, his mercy, his power, his strength. It's just like that for me, and it, it, it really lifts my day, and I just feel I can go into the day with the strength of the Lord. But you know that saying, blessed to be a blessing? And, you know, I do get blessed by that, and so... I've decided to pass those songs on to others. So that's what I do to some of other people I know. And yeah, that's me. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mary. Isn't it great? Hopefully you've got some, some ideas there about maybe different ways that you can connect um, with God in the season of life that you find yourself in. Becca Garvin from New Spring Church, she wrote in a blog, time with Jesus will look different from season to season and that is okay. Pursuit, not perfection is the point. And I hope you heard that come out in testimonies, that it's about pursuit, it's not about perfection. Because we're not going to get this right 100% of the time and that's not the point. Spending time with Jesus is not about ticking off a box on our to-do list. Or about the days reading the Bible in a row streak you have on your YouVersion app. See, God is far more interested in the motivation of our heart. We read the Bible to learn about the God who loves us and pursues us. We pray because we want to talk to God about our circumstances and our emotions and we want to receive the Holy Spirit's guidance. We go regularly to a worship service to be part of God's community, to use our spiritual gifts to serve others and to speak and receive words that build each other up. We go to life group to support and encourage one another to connect more deeply with God and his mission. These are all opportunities to hear from Jesus, to learn from Jesus, and as a result, to become more like Jesus. Because it's about pursuit, it's not about perfection. Take Bible reading, for example. If you follow our SOAP journal, Bible reading plan, this one, 
You'll read through the entire Bible in a year. Now, if my motivation is perfection um, or a sense of duty, then if I miss a day, well, I make sure I read double the next day. You know, and oh my goodness, if I miss a few, then that's a whole chunk of reading to do. You know, because, so that I can tick it off as complete. But if my heart is about pursuing connection and deepening intimacy with God, then on some days I may only read a verse or two and allow them to nourish me throughout the day as I reflect on them, knowing that if I keep reading and following this Bible reading plan, eventually those other chapters will come back around again and I'll read them. So as we finish, here are four principles to help us remain connected to Jesus. Firstly, make it a priority. Every day we make decisions about how we spend our time. And if we can prioritize having a morning coffee or checking our emails or social media, then we can prioritize time connecting with Jesus. So make time, spend time in prayer, reading the Bible, make it your first priority. Becca Garvin, in her blog, she writes, Even on busy mornings, we get to make the decision about what matters more, time with Jesus or time on social media, time with Jesus or time in front of the mirror. Some days you're going to skip out of the door with freedom as makeup and joy instead of straight hair. Remember, your identity is in Jesus, not in what others think. Secondly, be consistent. There's power just in showing up every day. The effects of spending time with Jesus are cumulative. Like any relationship in our lives, we rarely realize how much it has shaped us until maybe months or years down the road. You probably can't remember every meal that you've ever eaten, but your body has been nourished by each and every one. Well, maybe some more than others, but, you know, it's been nourished. Likewise, you may not be able to recall every Bible verse you've ever read, but you'd be amazed at how many times a specific verse that you've read will enter your mind just at the time you need to hear it. So make it a priority, be consistent. Thirdly, be flexible with the when, where, and how. I discovered that I don't have to meet with Jesus first thing in the morning with the sun streaming in through my window. And like we've heard from these other people who've shared, we can talk to him anytime and anywhere. We can listen to the Bible when you're in your car, on the bus, going for a walk. You can read a devotional or you can listen to music before bed at night. So be flexible and be prepared to change as seasons in life change. And fourthly, hold on to the who, that's Jesus, and the what, that's about prayer and his word. Because reading books and listening to podcasts, they're great ways to learn about Jesus, but they can't replace time with Jesus. He's the only one who can truly satisfy us. And we will never reach a point where we have all that we need and we've done all that we have to do so we can detach from that vine. In every season, we need to stay connected to God through his word, through prayer, through godly relationships. He'll give us what we need and he'll equip us to meet each challenge in a way that brings him glory. See, to connect is the human need and life is at its fullest when we do. We've been created for connection. An upward connection with God, an inward connection with God's people and an outward connection with with God's mission. And over the next few weeks, we're going to further unpack how we can connect upward, inward, and outward in our own lives and as a faith community. So back to my to-do list. When I look at everything I do as simply items on my to-do list, I can get bogged down viewing my life as a series of tasks to be completed. Instead, what if I started to consider everything I do as an opportunity to connect. See, with a slight change in perspective, everything I can do can be an opportunity to connect with God, to connect with God's people, or to connect with God's mission. You see, hanging out the washing becomes an opportunity to pray for each member of my family. The car or the bus trip becomes an opportunity to worship God or listening to a teaching podcast. Preparing a meal for a family in need, serving at church, or encouraging someone over a coffee are all opportunities to connect with the family of God. A trip to the store becomes an opportunity to encourage the checkout operator, and talking with my neighbor is an opportunity to show Christ's love, because we have been created for connection. We need this. We can make excuses, but what it comes down to is how much do we really want this? Will we prioritize connection with Jesus 
and guard against things that will cause us to cleave or be disconnected from him. Will we be faithful, showing up every day, being flexible with the form of what that looks like, knowing that it will change through the differing seasons of life? And will we pursue opportunities to connect with Jesus, knowing that God wants us, not perfection? So as we pray to close, I want us just to spend a few minutes reflecting on the season of life that we're in and maybe the challenges we have to connecting with God. So why don't you close your eyes? Perhaps you feel like your connection to God has become a little bit like that kinked hose. What can you put into place to unkink the hose and to strengthen that connection? What do you resolve today to make connecting with God a priority in your day? Perhaps for some of you, you need to grab one of those soap journals or download it. And you need to challenge yourself to read the Bible every day for a fortnight and just establish a habit of reading the Word of God. For some of you, you need to commit to attending a life group where, as we heard, together with others, you can go deeper in your connection with God. For some of you, that might mean coming to the church-wide prayer meeting tomorrow, something you've always been meaning to do but keep putting off. What are you going to resolve to do today to unkink that hose and to strengthen that connection? Because it's all about intimacy with God. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, even when we aren't faithful, you are. Thank you for your desire to connect with us and that you do remain in us. Lord, I pray for each and every person here, Lord, that we may have a conviction in our heart, in our spirit, to remain in you. To remain in you. May we see it as the life-giving conduit that it is because apart from you we can do nothing but you have created us for connection and you have created us to bear fruit fruit that will bring you glory fruit that will bear witness of your love and your grace to a world that needs hope so Lord I pray for each one of us this week and in the weeks ahead Lord that we may deepen our connection and our intimacy with you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks.